as we think about the next 40 days, you know, I, I, again, I always want to strike a balance here in our church. I've got some people that, that think that, that they can drive down the highway looking through the rear of the mirror all the time, and it just don't work like that, you know? We, we've got to keep our attention focused on tomorrow. We've got to remember where we've been. We've got to know where we are. But we've got to be challenged with where we are called and to what we are called. And so as we begin this 40 days of community, we need to realize that this is the next plan, not for us individually, but for us as a church, for us as a community, which I'm going to speak very specifically to anyone here who says, well, I'll think about it. It's not about your thinking about it. Or I'll speak to that person who says, well, I tried that before and it didn't work. It's not about you. Turn to somebody and say, it's not about you. Now point to yourself and say, it's not about me. It's about us. Say, it's about us. Because, I, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper on this and then I'll move on. But I want to tell you that there is a malady, there is an illness that is pervasive in the church today, as well as society. And it is that malady of self-focus and independence. And I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I'll do it in the way I want to do it. And I'll do how I want to do it. And no one can tell me otherwise. How many of you have heard that? How many of you are sitting next to someone that says that? Like, don't, 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 don't. And look what, look what, in talking about God's faithfulness, the Lord says to Moses in verse 4, you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. There is an appropriate time to look back about how God has worked in our lives in the past. That gives us confidence for the future. That gives us the lift and the promise. And the beautiful illustration of, of bearing us on eagle's wings, uh, depending on, on, on the scientists that you talk to, sometimes the mother eagle will teach an eaglet how to fly by by creating a nest that becomes progressively uncomfortable until the eaglet wants to get out of the nest. And then she extends her, her mighty pinions, her wings, over the nest, and the eaglet clutches on the net, on the wings. And the mother eagle will go soaring high, bearing that little eaglet on her wings. And then she will kind of swoop toward the earth, swoop back up and watch the eaglet plummet, and then catch the eagle, eaglet, as it's, as it's fluttering, as it's trying, and she will bear that little eaglet on her wings. Think about what a beautiful metaphor that is as to the care and provision and relationship God wants to have with each one of us. Because I don't know about you, but I still need some training on my wings. I still falter and flutter when I'd like to soar and fly high. And there are times that, that, I, that I feel handicapped. There are times that I feel challenged. And just to know the faithfulness of God in the past, that he's never failed, he's always provided, he's always come through, he's always borne me, as it were, on eagle's wings, that's part of knowing the faithfulness of God. Not only in our personal life, but the faithfulness of God in the universe. The very fact that the earth is rotating every 24 hours, it's at a 23 degree angle, and no matter how out of control it appears to be on the outside, that there is a precision and timeliness of the spin of the earth itself that God has ordained and God has fashioned and God is working through because of his faithfulness.